bevel. This would be like a chisel. You want that chisel different than you normally use a chisel facing down. If you do use it like this, it doesn't work as good. It doesn't work as good, strangely enough. You want to be able to see that bevel right there. And one of the big differences in wet scrape brain tanning like we're doing is you don't want this thing to be sharp. If you can cut yourself with it, it's too sharp. Some people disagree. Usually a rough edge helps too. I'll usually file these things up a little bit so it'll help pull that grain off. If it's really sharp, you're going to score your hide up, period. Mine, if you notice, are very, very dull. I like a little duller. I don't mind doing a little bit more tricep work on these things. The duller it is, the less chance you have of punching holes in your hide. It's a trade-off. Any questions? You can stop me anytime if you need. Okay, so if you are a goal-oriented person, I slowly recommend you slow yourself down. If you're a <laughs> process-oriented person, you're gonna love this. If you look at that hide and blink and go, I gotta finish it, lunch is not gonna come too quick, too quick enough for you. So I'll lean forward on high, pick a spot. Comparatively, we do not discourage taking pictures. Some other schools don't allow it. Take as many pictures, take as many notes. If you do put it up on your social media, just please tag me. Absolutely, take as many pictures as you want. It'll help you go home and remember this. Absolutely, totally up for it. Okay, you can start anywhere on the hide. It does not matter. I recommend you start somewhere. <laughs> it doesn't really matter where you start. What I'll normally do, and this is just me, there are a couple ways you can do this one, is push the hair off. You can use the back side of the knife too. I'm just pushing the hair off. Some people push the hair and the grain all at the same time. I don't. And this is a very kinesthetic, very tactile activity. Notice I'm not white knuckling this. Not at all. I'm not putting much pressure in it at all. You don't need to. The more pressure you put, the more you're going to take off. See that little white spot? That's what I'm looking for. That is removal of that mucousy, mucilaginous snot layer of grain. That's what you're wanting to take off. Now, ultimately, see I'm breaking through it. When you wet scrape, you hydrate that layer, the grain layer. And so see those two spots? You want to connect all those and take as much of that off as possible. That will also help your hide be a little bit softer, if that makes sense. Now, let me rephrase this multiple times. You don't have to. You don't have to get all that. You can get some of it off. That big hide I have, a lot of the grain's left on it. It doesn't matter. Some people are real particular about you have to, you can't, you do this, whatever. It's your hide. It's also the first time you've ever done it, so don't kill yourself about it. bigger area. That's what you want off there. See what I've got underneath? That, now it's coming off. See it? That's off. That's off. When the sun comes out and disappears, you can really see what you're doing. Can you take too much off? Basically, and, and I, I will say this, you probably will punch a hole in it. You might not. If you do, so what? If you don't, so what? Be a student of the game. It doesn't matter. You're learning this. Don't be too hard on yourself. Make your expectations realistic about what you're doing. If you don't for the whole hide, that means you have a great, your, your cerebrum has a great connection with your digits. Really, it, it's all good. Whether you do or you don't, it's not a big deal. Now, what I normally do, what I like to do, is I'll take all the hair off and then take the grain off. You don't have to. You can do this process makes sense to you. Some people will do a section like this and then break the whole thing. Some people like myself will take all the hair up very quickly. See the differentiation right there? This is good luck skin weather right now. I'm, the sun came out, I'm pleased. And those are not rain clouds. <laughs> so we are looking good. So here's what you got. I'll take the hair off. And then start graining it. 
when you get to the edges, the edges, I, I say this all the time, it's up to you. Some people like to leave a little bit of hair on. I typically do, I think it looks cool. If I'm doing a buckskin bag and a flap, if you saw some of my flaps, I like to make sure that they came from an animal, they, they didn't come from a factory. So a little bit of hair left on it, I think it looks really cool. You wanna take as much off as you can. What I will do with that, uh, let me see where I can show you. I'm gonna show you something more easy. Like yay right here. I'll lean on it just on the edge and push towards the outside of the hide. You can leave a little bit on. You're probably not gonna get it all off unless you wanna go around and kind of ADD it like this. It doesn't matter. And then push the grain off like that. If you do this a lot, you will be able to take a thin layer of grain off like a typewriter like this. It takes a little practice. It's a real kinesthetic, real tactile sense. There you go. Questions? All right, I'm gonna go take a nap. I'll be Ready back <laughs> around lunchtime. Kind of big, Josh. Um, mm -hmm. Probably, but not necessarily. The solution we're gonna be doing for buckskin is a soup. The solution for hair on is more of an oatmeal. This is like a soup that we're gonna make with this. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take two five gallon buckets and cut it in half. Two of you gonna use one bucket, three of you gonna use the other. We'll probably put yours in with the smallest ones. Um, you're gonna dip it, we're gonna make a soup out of it, mash it up real good. You're gonna dip it in that brain solution, let it sit in there for, oh, I don't know, a couple minutes, and take it out, and we're gonna put the ringing post up, the ringing pole up here in a little bit. We're gonna ring the hide out, and we're gonna start stretching it. This, this was kind of the, 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 how shall I put it, the yoga, the, the decathlon is gonna start here in a little bit, the real physical labor is gonna start in a little bit. If it's a chilly day, this is gonna warm me up. But I cook these for no other reason than to take out the bacterial concerns. If you cook brains enough, it's not gonna change up what happens. The product that you're gonna make as far as brain tannins and something, it doesn't matter. Some people say it does, I've done both and it doesn't make a difference. But when you cook them as much as we're gonna cook them, it will absolutely, as much as possible, remove the possibility that there's gonna be any bacteria in here that you get in your hands. I've always got cuts on my fingers, so that's the reason I do it. And if I'm gonna do it for myself, I, would, I gotta do it for other people. Some people say, you can't cook brains. I always ask them why, because you can't, why? Because it'll change up the, the brain tent. Have you ever done it with, with cooked brains? No, but I, I have, and it's the same. So that's my take on that. Questions? What's that? Water from the sky or from the creek. Do not use tap water, especially city water. Chlorine will arrest the tanning process. There are a lot of things that you cannot do. Fermented foods, you don't want to use water out of your tap for me. You want to use clean water. If you don't want to use water that's chlorinated. Like you don't want to use iodized soap for a lot of this because iodine will arrest that process as well. These things smell really good when they start to cook. <laughs> All this water, the water I use for my natural dyes too, it always comes out of comes out of the, the creek or from snow or from uh, from rain. I, I don't even use our tap water because we have to shock our well occasionally with a with bleach. Yeah. Cool. So we're done for a bit. We're ready to put a brain solution or to brain the hides, it's called. We're gonna dip them in a relatively weakened solution of vinegar. I just use white vinegar for this. Um, remember when you picked your hide up and it was real slippery? We're gonna take all that off. That, that's almost like a semi-permeable membrane that won't allow the brain solution on. This helps it when you're softening the hide. Helps soften the hide, if that makes sense. There's some chemical changes that are going on. We brought the pH way up, we're gonna bring the pH way down. We're gonna make this acidic. Get a little bit of water. You can still ring a hide and do what you're doing, but it's like trying to grab it when it originally was just slippery like that. It's very hard to do. This is another step that some people don't do it, some people don't know, that I have found that this makes everything after this easier to do. Not a deal breaker, 
but it does help with what we're doing. Okay. Who's, who, who is done, as far as they're concerned? Who's done, done grain in their eye? Okay. I'll, I'll say this, it's up to you. If you're almost done, you can call it done. If you want to push on it some more, you're welcome to. It's not a deal breaker. You're still gonna be happy with what you finish, I promise. So, if you feel the edges, and you see how it's still a little bit slippery? A little bit slippery like this? Okay. This is kind of cool, especially like right here. Feel how it's still slippery? Okay, ready? how much tackier it is, oh, yeah. bang. I would take that and just hang that on one of the breaking posts for now. Okay. You can hang it after you do your, hang it anywhere. You want to dry it back out like a sponge with most of the We have to release all the lecithin, and in particular, see that marshmallowy, creamy stuff? That's what we're looking for. Everybody go ahead and put your hands in here and feel how, how, how moisturizing that feels. It feels like a really nice moisturizing soap. That's what you're wanting to get on your hide. So we're going to do this. If, if that is too hot, let me know. We can put some cool water in it. You got to. What is that? Brains. Yeah. Cow brains. This is a good, a good broth starting right here. Good soup base. Oh, yes, ma'am. Hence the name of the class. Yes, ma'am. All right, go in there and squish that up. Where'd you get the brain? From the, from the, the, uh, the, these are commercially produced pound containers of brain. I wonder how far he wants it squished. Food grade brain. Soup. What do other people buy them for? Food. Food. They're, they're not bad. They're really not bad. Scramble them with eggs? Yep. Scramble them. You can bread them. You can mix them. And that's what you're going to be doing until dinner. Okay. So what's in there besides the brains and water? Yep. A little bit of turmeric, some uh, <laughs> tarragon, some Italian largely basil. Now once you squish this up, try to leave all the big brain particles in there, because that's what we need for future hides. Somebody get ready and go ahead and run their hide down. Move as much of it as you can so we'll save it. What's left over in this is going to go on your bison. What? On, on, on the, the bison hide on the far end right wow. now is spoken for. Okay, go. Pull as much of it off as you can. It's not going to No, ma'am. What up, brother? I thought we would get dirty. <laughs> it's very interpretive. Good dirty. Hey, if you want to see the knives, I got the box right around the corner back here. There's a, I've got that one Jim Bridger piece left. I got that one, it's the one with the Osage handle. You can't miss it. And then a couple other a couple other pieces that are ready to leave the shop now. All right, we're golden. So is that about soaking up the fat out of the brain? The the, the less of it, yeah. Yeah, so yep. why brain? Why not like bear fat? You, cause oh, I'm sorry. Um, you, bear fat. you probably, you probably could. There are a lot of other 